OK, let's move to the demos. As this webinar is fairly short, I'll be moving through them relatively quickly. However, the step-by-step -step instructions are included in the PDF version of the slides that you can download as part of this webinar package. So let's take a quick look at the board that we're going to be using. This is the STM32 MP135DK, or the Discovery Kit. We power it from the USB-C cable on the right-hand side, and we use the USB micro connection to connect to our laptop, which implements a connection to the built-in ST-Link V3 on the board, and also implements a virtual COM port. We need to make sure that the board is uh, configured to boot into developer boot, and we do this from the boot switch settings here. So let's go to Cube IDE, and the first thing that we will do is we'll open up this example project. So go to File, Open Projects from File System, and now we need to browse to our Cube IDE uh, firmware repository. Normally this is in your user directory, so in my case it's Young CHR, and we go to STM32 Cube Repository, and here we have the MP135 bare metal. Uh, HAL repository. So we go into there, we go into projects, we go to the uh, this directory here because it's the DK board we're using, then we want examples and we're going to use a UART example this time around. So let's go to UART, we'll pick the UART receive transmit console example and then we select cube IDE. So now we just select this folder, click on select and it will recognize that it's a Cube IDE project, and we click Finish. So this will import the project into our uh, uh, IDE, and if we expand the project, we can see the project structure here. The first thing we'll notice is that there's a readme.txt file, which is an information file that tells us about this particular project. So in this case, it's a UART example using UART4, and it's implementing a, a transmit receive link uh, to our um, computer running something like TerraTerm or HyperTerminal. The directory structure on the left hand side we can see the document we've just been looking at will be in the docs directory here. Uh, we have the application directory under user and here's where we have the main.c we can double click it to open it into our um, code editor perspective. And then we have the device drivers that are in the drivers subdirectory. So we have the main HAL uh, device drivers themselves, like UART drivers, reset and clock control drivers, etc. And then we also have um, SimSys startup files, startup files, and then we have um, some BSP components. So for components that aren't ST but that are on the board that we use, we have uh, a components uh, BSP subdirectory. So here we have, for example, an IO expander, an I2C IO expander that we use on the board. Now, we need to make sure that we select the correct tool chain. So to do that, we click the top level of the project, right click and select properties. And here we need to go to C++ build, settings, and just make sure that we select the correct tool chain. So here we go, click on apply and close. Now we can build this project uh, by clicking the build uh, icon or the hammer button and that will go and build the project. While that's building, it'll only take a moment or two, but we'll take this opportunity to have a quick look at the, uh, the, the main C file. So we can see that we've got a couple, uh, a few um, functions defined. So one for system clock config, this sets up the um, clock tree for the device. We've got some initialization for the GPO and initialization for the UART. If I scroll down to the main part of, main, uh, of the main function, we can see that the first thing we do is we call a function called HAL init, and this configures the HAL. And it'll be very familiar to you if you've ever used any of our CubeMX uh, HAL firmware uh, libraries for any of our microcontroller families. Then we call the system clock and config uh, function which sets up the MPU clock tree and then we've got a blocker conditional code that tests to see whether we've got this macro defined use DDR. Mo um, all of the peripheral examples are configured to run from SRAM uh, initially and so in that case we're not using DDR and so we set up uh, the, the PIMIC IC or the PIM management IC on the, on the board if you're using one. 
However, if you are using DDR, then if you remember that we need to configure the DDR controller first before we execute code from it. So in that case, the DDR controller will have already been configured, the PIMIT will have been configured, so we don't want to rerun that block of code again. Scrolling a little further down, we can see that the GPIO uh, init function is called and the UART function is called, and then we move to our main uh, program loop, which is simply using <clears throat> some print statements out to our UART and allowing us to uh, send characters back and process those. So, in the meantime, we've see, we should see that the uh, program is uh, built. We have zero errors, just one warning. Uh, and we can see on the right hand side, if I turn off my camera for a moment, you'll be able to see that we have the uh, build analyzer and this shows all of the regions uh, defined uh, in memory for the device. So we have sysram base, which is the internal SRAM, where we intend to run our program from, <clears throat> some other smaller blocks of SRAM, and then the DDR itself. Now what we want for this example is for it to be completely contained within the SRAM, and we can see that actually that's the case because none of the other regions are being used at all. Um, these regions are defined by our linker script. We can take a quick look at the linker script. If we double click on it here, we'll see that um, we've defined the memory regions. This is what's showing up in the memory regions uh, area. And uh, we have um, a couple of lines that define how this program is gonna be built. So we have an alias called RAM, and RAM is currently mapped to sysram base, which means this example is, is linking into sysram. If we commented that out and uh, replaced it with this line, then we'd be linking into DDR. So then that's all we need to do to configure this project to build so it runs in DDR. Of course, then we need to set the use DDR um, uh, macro. So we built it. Uh, we've had a quick look at the memory regions. Now we want to download it onto our board. So to do that, we select the top level of project. We select the debug icon and select the drop down box and select debug as STM32C C++ application. And this will connect to the board. Uh, pull up a sorry, it'll pull up a, a debug perspective. And the thing to note here, if we click on the debugger tab, we can see that we're using J um, SWD link via um, SD link. We're using um, OpenOCD to provide the interface to the ST-Link cable itself, and we're using GDB as the debugger. So we can click connect, or sorry, click on OK, and it will connect to the board. And we'll see in the console that um, we connect to the board and we download the code. This is asking me if I wish to uh, swap to the uh, debug perspective and I want to debug, so this is exactly what we want to do. So we click switch. And it downloads code to the board and it hits a breakpoint that's set by default at the first instruction after main. This is uh, CubeID is based on Eclipse and so we have all of the standard Eclipse uh, debug debugging functions like step into, step uh, over and step out of. Uh, if we want to just test this example, we can simply uh, click on the resume button. But before I do that, let's make sure that I have a serial console running connected to my board. <clears throat> this is TerraTerm, and this is connected to the USB micro connection that's connected to the board itself. Now, um, if I hit uh, the resume button on the uh, Cube IDE, it will start the program running and we can see in the serial console that we have some serial output. So if I press C to continue, it will pull up a test menu. And if I type test uh, one, it will fast toggle and I need to swap to my board. Hopefully you can see that the LED is actually toggling quickly and then it stops. So we can uh, type test three and it will exit this program. So that's a very, very quick whistle stop tour to show you how easy it is to open the um, pre-configured examples. 
So now we'll show you how to quickly create one of your own. So let's just stop this uh, project running. Click on the stop button and then <coughs> we'll close this project down. So we right click on the project and we select close project. So what we did before was we opened a pre-configured uh, example design. Now we'll create one completely from scratch. So we do this by going file, new, STM32 project. And this will open up the target selector. And this will take a second or two. Okay, and here we have the target selector. So we have the MPU, MCU selector, board selector and example selectors. In this case, we want to start completely from scratch. So we select MPU selector and we type in, we don't have to type in the full part number if you can't remember it. We just need MP135F and this will narrow the search for me. Um, so it shows uh, all of the S, F suffix parts. And I can see from this column here that actually this, uh, this device is fitted to the DK board. So all I need to do is make sure that I've uh, highlighted that row, click on next, and that will select that device that's on the board as my base part. We need to give it a, a name. Let's call it bare metal, for example. It can be anything, of course. Uh, bare metal. The important thing here is to make sure that we select bare metal as an option, not OpenST Linux. This allows us to create a project that's compatible with our bare metal flow. We need to make sure that we are uh, building an executable and that it's a STM32 cube type project. So now we can click finish. And it's asking me, do I want to open the uh, configuration perspective? This is a CubeMX configuration perspective. So we do. And this will take a few moments uh, because it's building the project and it's um, configuring so that we can configure the, uh, the, the pin out. So this always takes a, a few moments. Okay, nearly there. Right, so it's just populating the windows and in a moment you'll see that we have a, a view of the, of the actual uh, device itself. And the fact that all of these pins are currently uh, not uh, highlighted in color means that we've got a complete unassigned chip. So uh, if we just take a quick look um, at uh, my presentation for a second and um, we move here, we can see that um, this, is, this is a fraction of the schematic of the board and we can see that this MPU pin PA13 is connected to L, L, LED4, which means we can toggle this pin and drive the LED. So that's what we want to do. So if we look for PA13, uh, if I type in PA13 in the search box, it will highlight PA13. It's currently unassigned, but if I click on it, I can select it as a GPO output. So now it's got some color. If I zoom in, uh, we can see that it's, uh, it's, it's listed as now as a GPIO output, GPIO output. Let's give it a username by right clicking on it, or rather a label. And let's say, let's give it something like LED PA13. Okay, hit return, and now I've given it a user label so that I can more easily identify it in the code. Now, if I go to the uh, peripheral configuration column and I look for GPIO and double click on it, we can see now that I have a, a listing for PA13 and uh, its initial condition is low. We need to assign a pin context to it. So here we select application, and this is this is to, to, to make it clear that it's going to be used at the application level. We can leave all the rest by default. It's output, push, pull, no pull up, no pull down. And the user label is the one we assigned, PA13. 
Now, the clock configurations are up, can all be used as default. We can make some changes, but we don't have so much time to do that. So now we can save uh, the file, the, the changes we've made, and this will ask us, do we want to generate code? We say yes, and uh, it will open up the C++ uh, perspective so we can actually see the changes we've made. And this will now uh, update our project with our and generate a, 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 an empty project that we can now um, add code to. So if I if I move, make sure I move to the C++ perspective, uh, and then go and look at the main .c that's been generated for me. So under the uh, sources. Here we go under core, we have source, we have main.c. And here we have a very, very simple project. So we've got two functions defined, one to, uh, to configure the clock tree, one to configure the GPIO setup. And again, in, in main, we call the HAL initialization function, we call the GPIO setup, and then we've got an empty while true loop. And this is where we can add our code. So. Uh, we want a function to toggle the LED, for example. So we have um, in our firmware library, we have a function called HAL underscore GPIO underscore, and it's toggle. But if I'm a little lazy, I can use the uh, Eclipse function of autocomplete by pressing control and space, and this will pull up that function for me. I can hit return, and it auto populates uh, with some hints to tell us what I want to put in there. We'll come back to that. Um, and then we want to delay because we, we want to be able to see this pin toggle. So we can use HAL underscore delay, use the same autocomplete function. And it's HAL, HAL delay is the function we want. So moving back to GPIO toggle, it's asking me for a GPIO bank number. And if I can't remember what that is, but we, we remember we used a user label and we called it LED PA13. So if I type LED underscore and then autocomplete, it will give me some options. Okay, and it's the bank number I want. So this is a uh, automatic curated definition that helps me when I'm coding. So it's GPIO port, and we can do the same for the LED underscore PA13 pin number. And it's, so it's pin. And the delay that we need to pass is a delay in milliseconds. So we can type 500 for example, make sure we've got a semicolon. We hit save, we hit build, it will build. We should have zero errors. So if we just uh, move back to the project, uh, top, top level of the project, we can see that it's populated our memory regions again it's linked correctly because we don't have anything in uh, any of the other regions other than SRAM. And now we can simply do what we did before, which is um, create a debug perspective. So we go to the bug, select uh, debug uh, as STM32C C++ application. And this will open up a debug configuration. We don't need to change anything in it at all. We just click on OK and it will connect to the board, download the code, and it should stop at the first break, uh, first instruction after a main, which in this case is Halinit. We can simply run it by uh, clicking on the resume button, and we should hopefully be able to see a toggling LED at uh, two hertz. So, there we go. Uh, a very, very quick overview of how to import an example into Cube IDE and then how to create one of your own. So I hope that's been useful. Please bear in mind that the complete instructions are in the PDF. And thank you very much. We'll move on to the final Q&A.